Alright, go live. And I guess give me a link to the stream, too. That I'll have it muted on my end. Hmm. I guess once it is live, just give me the link. I guess I need to go find the Game Detectors YouTube channel. Because I have no clue where chat is. Here we are. Now I am here. Just need to resize everything and actually get it fit in the stream window. Close enough. Hello. I think I recognize your name. Two. seen your name somewhere online, probably on Twitter somewhere. But yes, today I'm going to be doing some marvelous designer stuff. Not something quite identical to this piece, but <clears throat> I think I'm going to do like some covered piping, but usually my workflow is for modeling in Blender and then exporting out some stuff into marvelous designer and going on top. I believe we're all good to start streaming and whatnot. Let's all be good then. I think the design I'm going to try to be doing is having some sci-fi elements go on the left and right of the texture and down the center there'll be a bunch of piping but the piping will be all covered up with some fabric or some sort of maybe a plastic covering that's all kind of pushed down on top of it and has bands coming from it hooking onto latches. Kind of like covering for all the piping, kind of like insulation. I'm going to mirror this. Oh, and Blink 2.8 is finally out with the actual full full release. I'm excited about that. I think I'll be doing the majority of the sci-fi part inside Substance Designer. But I want to just block this out for when I go into Marvelous Designer. Let's actually set the origin to this. Get in the center and delete that so that this is being mirrored.
ones at the size I want it. Um, right. Usually what I like to do while actually modeling components of textures is put in the camera and switch to the orthographic. I'm actually planning to actually render from this so. though. Do we need the camera to be orthographic? And then I use it just to eight. Yeah, now I can kind of see how I'm modeling the texture. Now I just need to model up what I kind of want the tubing to look like, and that's going to be the main part. I'm going to be importing it into the Marvelous Designer, which I think I'm probably going to have it mostly kind of a loose cable design. So let's see, I think I will create a cylinder. Put it down say 16 seconds. As for this, I don't really care how long it is. Go and do this. And that should go on to it a little bit better. And we're going to set order to the selection. 3D cursor to selection. a bit differently in 2.8. It's supposed to be easy to see, but it feels hard to see in 2.8. But I want to array this upon that. So fit curve. There we are. I just need to add a curve modifier. Set to Y. Now this should be good. And hello, Synodic. Not much is up. Just trying to prepare my nerves, my curves. I'm going to be laying out some piping and cabling here because I'm going to export out to Marvel's Designer. Hard to kind of shrink on top with the caving to cable and tubing. Just to make it look insulated. I'm trying to think of how I want it designed. Also want to make sure I have all these in the correct folder. Okay. 
let's call this 201 and then curve 201 then when I duplicate these it should all named all correctly okay correct enough just call it curve dude and the rest of it incorrectly which I could go and put the dot zero zero one so forth there but I'm not going to do know that I want to do Alt D. I mean, to hit Alt D and where it should keep it all linked. That way, when I edit one, it edits the other one too. Like so. so let's do that. So I'm going to take this first curve. And actually, one more modifier I'm going to add on here is an array. So currently I'm using basically this square I have right here, this one as a reference for where my texture is kind of going to be baked to. I'm probably going to be baking inside Marmoset tool bag just because I love baking Marmoset tool bag. Very good for baking. But baking inside Blender would also work for SD. Um, I just like tool bag a lot though. But I'm kind of just buying out the base here for eventually importing this in the Marvelous Designer with the simulation. Which Marvelous Designer is great for this kind of stuff. So I'll actually make this thinner. Do scale shift Y. Go a little bit thinner. Okay. So now I should be able to array this. But not like that. And do it upon a Y by eight meters. There we go. So now it's tiling. And then I just need to adjust where I have this. I probably need to smooth it out some more too. Actually, have this go up and then down. Alright, now that the first one's down, I can just select both these and hit Alt D. Do the same process again, and now with curve up 0, zero 1. Oh, that's not right. Why is that? Oh, it's keeping the curve data in sync. That's annoying. Should not be doing that. I don't want to do that. Oh, let's see. So I'm on the official full release of Blender 2.8 now. Some of the things have changed. But I do think this had remained the same on before. Is object data looking? Oh, here it is. Curve up zero zero one. And this curve. Now we get different curves. I don't know why it's keeping them sync. Let's just delete that curve. Click on this one. Hit Shift D. Grab on two dot zero zero one. And then tell it to use curve about zero zero one. Let's make sure this first tube is referencing the correct data. It's referencing just curve, which is what I want. So now when I move this, it should be correct, except sort of not really. And that is because the array is now not referencing the correct data. 
Yeah, so. A little bit annoying. I thought it would automatically not do that. I think it might be dependent on the order I have them selected in. Let's try having the curve select first, then the mesh, and do Alt D. And now, no. Maybe I need the mesh, then the curve selected, and we'll be happy. I guess I may just have to do it that way, which I don't want to do. It's annoying. But oh well. Software's annoying. As long as these are being referenced by each other, that way I can go in and change all of them at the same time. If I go back and scale this up and then hit tab, it'll go back and apply that to all of them. Let's not do that yet though. Well, let's have this tubing here. I think I want this one wrapping underneath here. Just need to make sure these are going down and under enough. I just want the clip for when I do the simulation. And let's move this up. All right. So instead, what I'm going to do is just hit Shift D these which duplicates it but the reason I didn't want to use shift D is now the object data won't be linked but I can go into the objects data here I keep on losing track of where that is so all the UI is different now here we go so I want this to be referencing a cylinder Yes, and now they're all using the same data. Let's move this one back. Yeah, I think I answered the question. Relatively well enough, maybe not. I guess I'll find out soon enough how well I answered the question. Marmoset Baker is really, really nice. My one pet peeve with it is when you bake out height in it, is it doesn't automatically normalize it. So your height can, you kind of have to guess a little bit on the height just to make sure it's overshooting some, then you have to auto normalize it. But I feel like it should just normalize the height. I don't know why it doesn't be something I'm not quite seeing in it, but I've been doing it for so long and searching everywhere for it, so I haven't found it. Okay, make sure this mesh is referencing the correct object data, so cylinder again. I want to go ahead and add on a new modifier. Let's add on the subdivision surface modifier. I'd 
put it at three or so. Maybe even four. Actually, let's do three, and then I'll smooth out the mesh. I do want to make sure these are relatively smooth. I just want to take this out and do the simulation. It will pick up the individual polygons, but it's not smooth enough. Let's see what we're doing is that. Let's put them all at three. Also, if you hit control and then one of the number keys, it will automatically add a subdivision surface modifier and then do it at whatever level you did. I'm just hitting control three to automatically add a subdivision surface at three subdivisions. Three and curve three. Let's duplicate that again. It's a little bit laggier now though because of that. That's fine. I'll actually probably be moving all these over in a second. Let's move this one up. Let's scale up on the line. the correct data again. Referencing cylinder object data. And then I'm going to switch the array modifier on this. Oh, and thank you. I've been having a lot of fun doing all those new scans and doing a lot of different scans just random clothing from my closet and also some fabrics that we've ordered before uh, if you're interested in the software i've been using the process of scan it's called dabardi d-a-b-r-t-i i believe mike may be able to post a link in a second for chat i can look it up in a moment and it's a very nice scanning software People asked before for me to do a stream on the scanning process, but it's very resource taxed on the computer, and I'm not sure how well it would stream. And it was like a big part of the workflow where you basically have to sit and wait for it to calculate, which wouldn't be exactly that fun. I mean, can I edit multiple curves at a time? Yes. Good. And move this to like right there. All right. And then I want to move this up. And then also this one. Subdivide this. Ah, uh, yes, thank you, Mike. There is the link to Dabardi. It is very, very good. It is, however, command line interface only, so the, the lady, there's no user interface basically, it's just a black command console box. But sometimes it's worth taking a look at programs like that because they can be really freaking amazing. Um, I think this is how I want the cabling to be adjusted just a little bit. Let me look inside the camera on it. And then I can export this out to Marvel's Designer. Oops, a bit of my X. Alright, that looks good.
Right, so in reality capture, so there's two different types of scanning that I've done before, and I think there's a lot of other methods, but so reality capture is photogrammetry, which is where you take a ton of different photos, and from that it'll calculate from different angles how to build a 3D mesh, which this other type of scanning technically falls under the definition of photogrammetry, but it's called photometric stereo scanning. And that is where it will use different light angles in order to calculate normals. So I basically move a flashlight around the fabric and it will look at all the different pictures of light at an angle and calculate it. You've probably seen like the eight light scan setup in Substance Designer, maybe the algorithm that gets posted before, and other things. I'm gonna have a little bit of paper for these. Yeah, maybe. I'll keep it like that. But um, yeah, so that, that's the main step in that. And the reason I use Debardi over, say, the eight scan, the eight point lights inside, like Alchemist or Substance Designer, is that Debardi lets you take as many pictures as you want, and it will actually figure out where all the light sources are located. So you use a little reflection probe which in my case is a, uh, a marble. And so it can look at that little marble I've placed and then see where the highlight is on it and figure out where the light sources are. So it's very, very nice. Uh, all right, I think this is good to export. Let's go ahead and export this out as OBJ. Let's call this tubes. Yeah, I'm gonna put it into a folder, the MD folder. Make sure it's selection only. Information. No, don't do about that. Apply modifiers. And I'm probably gonna need to screw around the scale once I get it into Marvel designer. Yeah, you don't have to take too crazy many shots. I usually take like maybe 20 pictures or 20 different light angles technically, anywhere from 12 to 20. Um, I know I've seen some people talk about custom programs they've used that are based on the same principle of using Reflection Probe. And for them, they have taken like upwards of 300 pictures of basically every picture of the camera is in the exact same position. The only difference between each one is the light source is moved to a different location. And so it uses those light angles to kind of capture the differences. So by that exports, I'm gonna launch Marvelous Designer. Marvelous Designer 8. Marvel Center 8 is very nice. I've been on Marvel Center 7 for a long time, but with 8 you can actually import your own custom fabrics. Basically custom fabric meshes from your modeling application, which is very cool. And we'll probably see how long this takes. It won't take that long. There we are. I need to adjust the scaling on this though. Don't show me this again. Okay, so here is Marv's Designer. Marv's Designer is more targeted towards character artists, but it's actually really great for doing textures. find the folder in here. Okay, cool, it's done. Um, all right, I may want to lower the subdivisions on this in half in a moment. For all, that might be a bit too much for Marvel's designer. I can just smooth it out. 
Actually, I'm gonna take a look. It's not that bad. At least I hope it's not that bad. Can I drag and drop OBJs into this? Hey, I can. How neat. So, let me think really hard about what my import options are supposed to be. Uh, yes, I can turn up my voice a little bit. Not sure how much more I can turn up. We did a bunch of testing before recording. Maybe get my voice just right. Let's go on mic's end. So here it is, quite a bit higher, but that may be too loud for some people. this OBJ a bit smaller model size I'm kind of afraid it's gonna lag like hell when I try to do the Marvel designer simulations on it it's too dense it's at about 322 megabytes which is kind of high and plus we can just smooth it out anyway the simulation to hide any polygon artifacts I don't think I'm going to be doing like a really fine silk material either. It's going to be capturing every single little detail. Obviously more like a hardened tarp or sort of some sort of plastic covering. The arrangement points were not fitted to the avatar. The avatar must be an 18 pose with A pose. I don't care about that. And that came in really big. Like, way too big. Oh, right, that's why. I have it set to meters. Hmm. Let me re import. No, I don't. Actually, I'm gonna delete this. Delete. Add this in. No, I don't wanna save. And let's reduce the scale to 10%. I may need to scale back up by 10 when I get back into Blender. But hopefully this will go up there. I'm gonna go ahead and go back into here and adjust the subdivisions on these down to two. Don't think they need to be so and I think I can select multiple of these and hit control too. Yes, I can. All right, that's better. Let's go back to Marvel's Designer. It's probably still trying to import those. And it's not letting me pull up Marvel's Designer. Go ahead and re export these. And if I need to, I can re import into Mars Designer. Let's export OBJ again. And actually, before I do that, I really should probably wait for Mars Designer to finish importing the geometry. Probably not a good idea to write to the file while Mars Designer is reading from it. And once again, I don't care about the avatar. There we go, that's a much better size. It's about the size I want it. Came in like a hundred times too big. Okay, and yeah, it's a bit clunky. So I am going to lower the resolution on it. This time it should go quite a bit faster since I lowered the polygon count. And everything should hopefully be quite a bit smoother. And then once I get the simulation done, there'll be a little bit more modeling to do. And 
Then I'm just going to assigning to materials and then baking. And then on to Marvel's designer or substance designer. One of those designer programs. Nope. Do not. And put the scale to 10%. And okay. So now it should import relatively quickly. Huzzah! Yes, and that's much quicker too. All right. So what I need to do is ah crap I should also load in this plane here so I can have an idea of how big this is um let's move this down some more and export that out with this basically I kind of just want a reference square to know how big I mean actually I just need to export all of this Actually, hmm. let me think. Here's what I'm going to do instead. I am not going to export these side parts. Instead, I'm going to export just these, and then I'm going to redo those segments in Blender to match the geo that comes out of Marvus Designer. That way I can have a little bit more freedom inside Marvus Designer and not have to go so exact. Export once again. So I'm kind of having trouble seeing the points where it gets top of that it should be four here and then four here i still want to get it relatively actually it shouldn't matter that much i could move it up a little bit it would still tile relatively the same plus i'm going to fix the tiling a little bit inside of um substance designer once i get it out it's probably not that important So let's go ahead and try it first without re-importing it with that. So I'm going to just click once here. That's actually already about the correct size. So let's change the height to 800 millimeters. Technically these scales aren't quite identical, that's fine. And then it's going to think for a second to generate that, apparently. Or I think it's upset that it's intercepting the mesh there. All right. So for this, I'm actually, why is it not rotating exactly? No, I don't want that. It's been a bit of a hot minute since I've been back inside Marvel Designer. So reset 3D arrangement. No. Reset 2D arrangement. But I should be able to hold down shift and it should snap. I don't know why it's snapping like that though. It's not how it should be snapping. this once more. Gosh, it's so weird. Why are you doing this to me? Is there a better snapping option inside here? 
Probably not. Refers to our range. No, there isn't. Very interesting. I can always just get relatively close. You know, ballpark range. All right, I think that's how I want this. I'm trying to make this a little bit wider. Let's see. Can I hold down so I can scale on both left and right? Of course not. So let's actually re add this, but do it at 600 going left and right. Actually, I could have just moved it on the control. So if I let go and click, it'll give a more exact amount. Marvis Designer wasn't exactly made in my doing these more exact movements. That's the thickness I want. So that should give a one meter there and a one meter there for the total of the whole eight square. So next, what I'm going to do is add in some cuts here. So let's see what I want to do. Let's do the add point or spline. If I just left click once. Should add it. It's acting very slow today. It's not what I wanted. Let's right click, there we go. So let's add just exactly one or a uniform split. Points are too close together. No, they are not. Any uniform split around the entire length of this thing? Why? It's very strange. As if it's recognizing as one whole structure. This also has never done before. There. Now it should do it on just that component. So I had the whole thing active as going all around it. Um, so uniform split two, and then uniform split down here also by two, and then two more uniform splits. I suppose I could have just done three from the beginning. All right, and then I believe what I want is where is it? The free form line tool. Let's click on this dot here and this dot here. So let's move this to about right here. So if I right click now, I can do an exact increment. So let's do 80. No, not 180, just 80. So move that one by 80, then move this one by 80. And then I'm going to have these cut this center shape here and then delete it. So now I have these both on the side and actually I want those thinner. So let's move this over by, let's say, 20. So that way they're both going to be 50. And that's a bit better shape. I'll move this over by 20. All right. So 
So basically these are going to be the anchor points for my simulation. So there's one more thing I think I want to do. Let me think about it. Actually, no, I'm probably going to do that post inside of Yeah, I guess I'll do that post inside of Blender. Probably work best. So let's go ahead and duplicate these. Actually, cut and sew on top should work. Uh, yeah, I can try increasing it some more. Is this louder for you? Let me let me adjust my noise filter here. That might be what's taking it down so much. Can you hear this a little bit better? Or it might still be too quiet. Actually, the background noise in the house has gone away. I think I've, there have been some people doing construction here at the house. So I've had the, the noise filter on a little bit strong. Okay, cool. All right, so we hit Control K, that'll freeze it. And actually, I am going to hit Control Z quite a bit and go back several steps. To where these were both reattached. Then I'm going to right click and layer clone over and that should also so let's find out it's probably going to take quite a second to calculate that so now those are on top Yes, there we go. And then I'm going to go back down here and delete this centerpiece. Just because I wanted this to line up a little bit better. So let's cut. Hit the center part here and delete. These aren't joining, so what I'll need to do is, I guess, cut these two. So let's do just cut, probably. Actually, I might be able to sell those. Let's find out. So let's see if I hit there and here. Yes, that does. So I hope that actually simulates correctly. We'll find out soon enough. Or the whole simulation may just explode. So usually Marvel is pretty good with its simulations. So now I should hit Control K and freeze these components. Which means these won't win. Actually I need to move all this up. So let's grab all of this. Plus why well, can't I grab my avatar? There we go. So let's just move all of this up. Hey, why can't I move the avatar up? Is that really not a thing I can do? Please let me do this. There we go. Just being a bit laggy. I should have moved it up inside my Blender file before exporting because this, this grid here will actually collide with the mesh simulation, which I don't, why is it simulating? I don't want this. Um, Oh, I hit space by accident. That's why. So now let's move this up. And a little bit more, I think. The end result is I'm going to be exporting just this mesh part up here. And let me save this real quick before I possibly crash. So let's see, new materials. 
This should be inside here. So this is the maintenance tubing. Save the project. Okay, now let's see what happens when we simulate. And hopefully, it won't go through it. There we go, that's what I want. So now I'm going to go to this mesh and increase the particle or decrease the particle distance to 15. I'm probably not going to decrease it much more after this because basically the smaller the particle distance number is inside Marvel Designer is the more detailed the simulation is. Basically the more polygons are on this fabric. So to make it hug tighter we can increase the shrinkage like that. And I think I want this really tight to it. So now I can go to the pressure and make that negative and it should be essentially moving downward towards it. Yes, yeah, something like that. Let's do negative 30. And I think I like that. So to get a bit more better detail, I'm going to change the material preset, or the simulation preset. Let's try muslin canvas. Should get something a little bit tighter. Okay. Usually I'll go through and mess with just a lot of the different presets. And you can adjust these quite a bit more, but I remember there's a one specific that I had really hugs just a lot better. Yeah, I like that a little better. So it's probably gonna be a more of a plasticky like material once I get it into Substance Designer. So now I'm going to increase, decrease the particle distance to 10 and see how it looks. Let me save once more in preparation for if there's a crash. Okay, and now it's simulate again. The cool thing about Marvel Designer is you can actually grab parts of it and mess the simulation some. There's also some new tools for adding in very specific seams or wrinkles which I haven't messed with quite yet. And messing with the, the shrinkage weft should increase how tight it hugs too. So I probably want to mess more with the warp. So let's try this. Uh, it's the other one. Let's do 130. Yeah, I don't know, I think it's way too tight. Or way too loose. Let's go back to one, 120. So I think I have this about how I want it, and I can, let's change the collision thickness. Yes, this one should definitely be on our YouTube channel. The first one we did, I had, I was stupid. And when I, was, I chose bad music for streaming, the kind that gets copyright claimed. Though I knew it was gonna get copyright claimed, I just thought it would be demonetized, which we're not gonna have advertisements on this anyway. But I didn't know it would flat out get taken down, but it, it most certainly did. I wasn't doing Marvel's Designer before on that, I was just kind of messing around with Substance Designer. But now we're using much more royalty free music. 
So now I'm going to increase the particle distance down to 5, which is usually the lowest I'll go in Marvel's Designer. I usually don't need to go much lower than that. And this should capture a lot more details. So now we're kind of getting the ridging a little bit better there. And for tiling, for actually truly tiling this, it's already tiling uh, relatively close, but it's probably going to be quite exact because what I'm going to be doing is just moving over part of it inside Substance Designer and then blurring it together. And then it should hook up pretty well. So probably going to make this a little bit longer and get even closer. I really wanted the tubes to be truly exact, but it will look pretty good this way too. In this workflow quite a bit so I kind of have a clue as to what I'm doing. Not my first Marvus Designer Rodeo. It's my second. Actually more like my probably like 40th or so. Okay um, so now I can just select the garment over here and hit export to OBJ selected. So, MD export is what I'll call this. And I'm going to change the scaling some inside of Blender, but that's fine. So, single object, uh, thin, and then, so I did it by one tenth, I'm going to want to scale this up by 10, so put that at a thousand percent and hit OK. And there we go, it already exported. So now I can import it into here. Let me get this camera out of the way. Oop. So let's go to, I wonder if from the new point to point we can actually drag and drop OBJs on now. Let's see. No, of course not. I'd really like it if you could do that. Just drag and drop on the blender, but apparently not. Might be an add-on option for it. Let's import the OBJ. text orders. We're going to need to do a little bit of cleanup on this. Let me change the shading in here. So you can see it kind of got moved up a little bit, which luckily in this case I don't care about it matching up perfectly inside Blender because I Really just some plan just to bake this component here. I'm thinking about modeling in some of the strapping parts here. But I'm not quite sure yet. Um, I can probably, let's see. Basically I want some little kind of notches here and then banding straps going between these notches and the sci-fi components gonna be attached to over here. What I'm going to do to keep this more mod modular is just export this. So let's go up to here, move it up, and then I'm going to scale it down just a little bit. Yeah, whoops. You get more of it in the scene. Apply rotation and scale, and then this is what I'm going to export. So let's move this to our new collection. So move to a bake collection. So let's do this fabric underscore high. And I'm just gonna use this as my low. Let me make sure it has proper UVs on it though. It, does. I want to wrap it again just to make sure it's going all the way to the edge. That's not that important. Okay. So let's export this as OBJ into a new folder called Bake. 
I'm just going to call this the baking score plane. Just play multipliers, blah, blah, blah. It's all good. And then for this, let's see. Okay, good. So for this, I'm going to add in the subdivision surface modifier on it, which it's going to think really hard on that. And then for baking, I should just be doing actually the normals and height for it. Everybody don't need, I, I've done some testing between quality difference, of like say the curvature and so forth from the two. From like baking out the curvature in Marm's tool bag and then testing how it looks generating it inside Substance Designer and there's really just not a big enough, it's just not quite worth it. Okay, that should be good. So let's export this OBJ uh, to baking. So let's just call this fabric. Export, and why it does that, I'm going to go ahead and open up Marmosa tool bag, which I'm not gonna be doing any crazy unique stuff inside this, so. Hey, new update. Let me get this relatively lined up for you to see. All right. <clears throat> uh, let me actually open up that folder if I had opened just a second ago. Open the file location. Blender's all done. So that's not what I want. There's my stool bag. So I'm going to drag in the baking plane. And here it be. And then grabbing the fist brick, which I accidentally hit S instead of A. So this is now the fist brick. Close enough. So if you haven't done baking inside of tool bag before, it is very, very nice. And why does it have the sky on? I'm change the sky real quick to something better. So I can actually see what is going on in the geometry. But I really love the baking inside of tool bag. It's very nice. Okay, so now I just need to go to the baking plane here and extend the offset, and make sure it captures everything. No, so about 2.5. I go to my baker option, and I need to change the mic T space. Mix looks X normal. And okay, I guess the big maps will go there fine. Uh, let's change these samples to 16, 16 bit. Choose the output, which this is not where I want it. So, full filters. I need to navigate back to where it was. Hmm. And I guess I'll do these as PNGs and just take it directly into Substance Designer. And let me name it. Cover maintenance tubes. Alright, so now I have the output specified, and I have normals, and I believe, yes, I need to flip the Y on this, but it's going to bake it in OpenGL, so I need to flip the Y, and then normals, I also need to bake the height. 
approach for the height. I need to adjust the inner distance to be like negative 0.5 and this to be 2.5. This is basically the numbers of how far it's going to be going upwards and below this plane. So actually I could just move this, make this a little easier, make this go down a little bit. That way it's all 100% above it. But then I need to check to make sure it's not clipping through this. Uh, it looks like it is a little bit. So let's put that to 2.8 or 2.9. And now I need to go up to height and adjust it to be about the same distance. Though I don't think it is actually the exact same distance. Like I said, I really wish the height would somehow know how to auto normalize on this. But I guess it's more intended to be baking full 3D props that may have trouble calculating that. Okay, let's save this. Now for I bake in case it crashes. Just call it bake. And we got the output. Okay, so I should be good to go. And I don't want any padding. I'll do the padding inside of Substance Designer if I need any. So now I can hit bake. And I'll start getting textures here. And what are you going to open this in? All right. So I got some of the, the baked tubing textures. And I could go a little higher. Actually, I might, I probably just need the height on this and not the normals. So I can convert the height to normals, which technically isn't as accurate but the normal data on this, I don't need to be insanely accurate. So, actually I'll keep the run out. I'm actually going to, hmm. yeah, I think I'll keep it 2K. I think that's all I really need on this. So let's go ahead and tab over to Substance Designer and then drag and drop these in. I don't know why I keep closing my file explorer. So let's link these resources. This link will be update these whenever I want. And change the grayscale. And then auto normalize or auto levels. And and here we have it. And there's another thing I don't like about um, another thing I don't like about Marmos tool bag is it automatically sets the outside to be the max height value, which I don't know why I would want to I think it'd be if it sees nothing it'd be pure black, but apparently not. Oh well. So what I will should be able to decrease this and then add in a blend and subtract. There we go, subtract. And then I'm going to really quickly do a tiling on this. So I'm going to grab the transform 2D node and flip this 180, so it won't be as easy to detect. Move it up by half. Let's make a shape. Uh, squish it a bit on Y. Pull on back down quite a bit. And then let's invert this and blur it. <clears throat> and I don't need the high quality on that. 
Okay. Let's actually use a height blend. Or I'll just use a regular blend at the start and see how well it does. High blend can get a bit better, a bit better mixing, if I can speak. Looks like it's not matching up up and down truly perfectly. So let's fix that. Um, might want to cut or blend it a little bit differently. It's about how I want it. Let's go ahead and plug it into a normal node and see what it generates. So I'm probably going to need this normal to be pretty strong. And maybe I do want the normal. Let me go back and compare it to the normal edge and write it. So generating normal from height isn't always super accurate. So that's quite a bit closer. Yeah, that's about right. Good enough. And I always aim for good enough. Right, a few things I need to do. Let's first add an ambient occlusion. I'm going to change the color. So, ambient occlusion. No, go all the way, please. Let's grab this and change the identifier to the same. Relabel to AO. I'm going to be using just the node here. The newest and the beta of Substance Designer right now, they have a new node tool, which they, they did show off at SIGGRAPH recently. It's, it's a very nice that I'm on 2019 right now. I don't think it's out yet anyway. Not for a public release at least. But it basically replaces the whole shift alt function that's inside of SD currently. Then I'm just gonna make this uh, kind of a clay gray for now, or a more whitish color. And also add in curvature. Let's add this in. And I like to use a separate normal node for the curvature in case I want to change the intensity of the curvature but not affect the overall normal. So you don't have an intensity control on the curvature here. Let me change this to gradient map. And then let's make this overlay. And I guess I can add on displacement. Neat. So now I just need to build the side sections here, which I'm not 100% sure what I want to do for those just yet. Kind of have to be screwing around with it as I go. Figure out what I want. I know I want something relatively similar to how I had it back inside Blender. Um, so let's go ahead and frame this. I'm gonna use this as my ref. So now I just need to fill in these parts here. I kind of want this on top. Uh, yeah, I suppose I could use the levels 
right after that. I don't know if the curvature generate. I don't think the curvature generates identically though, based on that. Like if I were to do this at intensity of say 10, I don't know if I'd be able to reach this same intensity just by using the levels node. I might be able to, I've never tried that. Actually, I probably can. Though I still would like to keep it separate because when I expose parameters on the normal intensity, I may want to, after I have it exposed, say, just increase normal intensity on this, but not affect the curvature detail it adds in over here. So I still want to keep them separate so it's not feeding in one after the other. That way the parameters won't overlap and affect each other. So let's add in probably one and make this a generator. So let's shrink this upon X. Let's invert it. And for this, I'm going to want to do max lighten. And actually, let's swap these. And then I'm going to use a levels node to make a mask. And I'll probably want to blur that just a little bit in a moment. And then I'm going to add another levels node here and bring up the maximum low value. First, I'm going to bevel this some. So let's do an edge detect here. Yeah, maybe I will do this as two separate pieces. It's just two separate pieces instead. I think I'm going to add a lot more to it. So I'm going to bevel this. Actually, for this, I don't need the bevel. Yeah, I don't need to do that. Instead, I'm going to add this here. Let's lower this value. And this one I want to bevel. Put the point 85 and bevel it inwards. No. And it's a bit too much. Do negative 0.05 for this. Is it better? It's still really strong in there. So I, I adjust the max light and it should go quite a bit down. Oh, did the music stop apparently? Video pause, continue watching out. Oh, YouTube, my, I had music playing in the background, which apparently stopped. It's doing the whole Netflix thing where it asks if you're still watching, which I didn't know YouTube did that. But I guess they do now. Okay, what's our height looking like over here? So I want this to be raised to it so it's on top of that. Auto-level us now. Probably take that down to a very low value. Yeah, there we go. Some of these parts in the center are probably still lower than this, which is what I want. <clears throat> so I'm going to increase this more. I guess decrease the proper raising I want. And probably change the timeline on this too. 
if I can actually see it. Yeah, so now I can see the scimitar on there. Okay, I might want to change these parts here to fluffier padding too. Not sure. So let me think about what I want to do on this center part. I could have cabling or maybe venting might look a little bit better. I was looking at some stuff from Alien Isolation. Looking at all of the piping and tubing in that, which I really like. to do venting of some sort. So let's grab a gradient. Specifically, where is it? This gradient. And then do a bunch of tiling nonsense. And then for the pattern on it, I want to mask it to where it's just in this area here. So I'm going to do a edge attack. So I want it to be based off of this one. And let's multiply that to get just the outer parts. Multiply. Now I want to generate some sort of sci-fi pattern to go to make up the venting shape. And I might want to do a much more procedural method for it. Actually, I have an idea that I'd like to try. Um, where is it? Let me bring this over. Should be a pattern generator I'm looking for. The kind of cobble robot pattern. I know I can do some cool stuff with that. So I'm messing a lot with the AR, the arc pavement. It's a cool sci-fi pattern I was able to get with this on one of my recent material runs. Let's see if I can get it again. And the answer will be maybe. Levels node and keep this maxed. Pop this into the bottom and do only source. And then change this to be a random color. And where is that? There we are. And now I just need to mess with this a bunch. Let's change the pattern width. And the pattern height is what I did. Pattern height, probably the pattern scale, Let's see the, the distance and max this out. Let's lower the arc amount a bunch. Um, right, here's what I did. If I can't get the cool shape I had done before. It's a very interesting shape, but I feel like it's gonna be hard to replicate because I kind of just made it by accident. But it's kind of like this interlocking sci-fi pattern I generated with this. I just can't quite remember what in the world I did. I know I had this setup though. Increase the arc amount and lower the pattern amount. There, it's kind of getting closer to what I think I had. And we'll 
find out soon enough. I may try some of the different mirror. Let's try mirror corner on this and see what it generates. Mirror corner, top right, bottom left. Yeah, may not end up using this at all. It's kind of, eh, I don't know. Not sure if I like this shape. We'll find out though, if I like it. Probably not. I do think I want it rotated though. Let's actually, yeah, I'll do it after. And then invert. smoothing a bit. Probably end up doing a more very rigid polygonal shape. I think this is going to look too organic. Uh, it's definitely weird. It's kind of alien. I'll go ahead and get it plugged in and then I'll mess with it. Let's do a blend. Actually, the way I'll be doing it is by plugging this into here, and then, hmm, how do I want to do this? Let's actually, rather than doing that over here, let's take this and do it from in here. Maybe. And now I'll do it afterwards. So I'll double this inward and then subtract. Just a smidge. Set the subtract. And yeah, I'm going to do something more rigid, I think. Something a bit too organic for my taste. Maybe just make the edge detect thinner or even thicker. Interesting shape, I like that. Let's go ahead and get this set up to be going on the inside. So let's tile this by a lot, by like 70, maybe more. Yeah, I'm gonna have this subtract more. Hmm, 
That's odd. Why is that? Maybe I do want some sort of mask over here. Maybe if I blur it. Or doing min tarkin would probably be better for this. So let's invert this again and change it to min darken. That way it's more of a clean cut. There we go, that's a lot better. And then I can also use this for the mask for adding in the grate, the grating, and changing the color on the inside. Let's grab that. Let's flip these around to invert it. And then move it all the way up. And we'll control how much this goes in. I want to flip this first. Do 180. And then let's blur it just a little bit. Let's try point one. Maybe point two. Point three. Let's do point two five. Oh, it just wasn't updating. Let's do point one then. All right, uh, plug that in. Ah, yes, look at that beautiful mess, isn't that nice? We do max lighten. And then just lower the opacity. Actually, no, don't lower the opacity on that. Instead, do levels on that. Otherwise, it's going to actually have the opacity go down. I need to add this here. And I need to blur this a lot more. And I need to raise this. So now we're getting that in there. So we move this one to control how far that's going. I guess I might as well make this like full on subtraction. That way I can go as far as I want. And I think I want the bevel on it to be a bit more intense. So I guess I'll do that too. I'll probably change the, uh, let's do 0.1. Oh goodness, it's way too far. How's it doing this? I think that's relatively close. All right. I think I'm happy with that. Let me change the environment to something a bit more neutral. I try to use the neutral studio lights to get a better idea of how things look. So all the other environment ads add some, use some coloring to it. It's gonna be hard to see how things look and that does no bueno. I can fix that. There we are. Okay. So now that that's done, I think I probably want to add maybe some panels seeming right here. So why don't we add that maybe back over here? 
which will let me select. Maybe some screws and bolts would be a better fit. So let's go to gradient. I'm going to choose this one. And then change the rotation by 90. it way down and I want this to tile only vertically let's change that and first I'm going to change the curvature of this too some track will work this time around. I just need to move this over to here. Where are you? Oh, I need to flip this. That's way too strong, of course. intensity. So I actually have three ultra-wide monitors. <laughs> Quite a bit. Uh, my center one is a 4K ultra wide, so it's 21.9, and then my left and right monitor are like 25.60 by something, and they're both also 21.9. So usually I have Substance Designer going across my big center monitor, and then I have reference and other stuff on my left monitor, and then maybe chat, like work chat, up on my right monitor, or the all-important YouTube or Netflix. So I have some background noise while I work. Because currently I have, you know, YouTube and chat, so I can see what you guys are saying up on my right monitor. Uh, did the music stop again? Uh, music's still playing on my end, Mike. It probably may have just gotten to a quiet point. back and blur this mask a little bit. around some start messing with some generators I'll probably add some more details into here like some little bolts here and there uh, we'll do that probably soon and uh, that's interesting it looks like this isn't 
perfectly center aligned. You can see this is a little bit over to the left. So let's go back over to this frame here. Add a transform 2D. And let's see what it looks like over here. I'm going to change this to 1K for right now. So run a little bit faster. Using it run this lag, but I guess for the streaming, it's kind of using up resources. Okay, I can kind of see stuff there. Can I see things better over here? Hardly. There we go, that's a little better. So let's slide this over just a tad. I actually compress this too, and it would look fine. And I think I'll just move the seam over. So let's grab this. Move it right about there. Okay, that looks good to me. So I'm going to add in a few of the ID masks now. Or not ID masks, but get some of the masks I need. So this already essentially masks the center. Actually, no, it doesn't. So I want just this. So let's. Let's use a height blend node for that. Let's grab this one, this one. And then increase the contrast. And this is great because it gives me an exact mask of where it's actually showing up. It's not like a mask out the venting part much more easily. So I think I want that to be metal and this to be like a painted metal. This and this to be basically the same material. So I'm just going to carry this to a levels node up here. Looks so I can remember what this is. And then. I guess I'll do the same thing with this and also use the, um, actually, you know, I'm using a min darken on that. What am I doing here? Oh, this is where I'm blending those two together. So I'll use a height blend here too to make sure I'm getting this exactly where it should be. Generation is a little bit odd. Let's go over here to the mask and put the point to three. There we go, that's a bit smoother. Mixing. So I think that masks out all the major parts I need. I can just invert these, and that is odd. Why is that there? getting into this. Um, let's fix that by adding a blend node. And this is a cool trick I like to use a lot. I forgot a while back. 
is in order to crop, you can actually put in a blend node and then move the cropping area. So rather than using something like a shape or so forth. Oh, no way, I want it the other way. So I did want this. So let's move it to where it just goes over. So that's what's happening is these are actually getting over to where this seam is and going down under it, which I don't want. And then I need to do it on the right. It's a very quick and easy trick for cropping using just one node. It's basically a cropping node. You can kind of do the same with the transform 2D too, but that's more like squishing it. Um, all right, is this mask how I want it now? No, it's not. And I'm not quite sure why it's like that. I mean, I guess I can just crop it here too. To bypass that issue. Okay, I'm going to start off by just adding some very simple edge generation. I might go and color code these. So I don't think I'm going to be doing too much more normal detail other than the curvature info. So once again, I want to use a separate normal map to keep these separate as I expose parameters on so they don't affect each other. And then I'm going to add in curvature smooth. And so I'm going to increase the intensity on this quite a bit. And real quick to make sure this is all still tiling linearly, or tiling upon both, I'm going to go set this to absolute. I need to set this to be relative to parent. To make sure everything's doing right. Hey, and that caused an issue. Neat. So how about we don't do that? Keep that as absolute, and then change this relative to parent, or What's this absolute as? Oh, that's not what I want. That's not what I want at all. Let's put it at 12, I think. No, 11. Also 11, and then this one go relative to parent. There we go. It's fixing the artifacting there. Again, I need to fix this just a little bit. I guess I missed it. There we go. And now that's all perfect. Okay. Let's now type curvature again, get just a regular curvature rather than a curvature smooth. where just plug in this first one and I need to grab ambient occlusion too I'm probably not going to use it All right. 
right? So let's add and some color. So I want this section to be, I don't know, maybe a dark red or a dark blue. Kind of a similar color to one of my previous materials. Something temporary like that for now. And I know I'm going to want the center grading to be some sort of silver-like material. Let's duplicate this and make it gray. And grab that mask. So that's going into here. I also want this to be a different color, I think. Let's go ahead and do that too. So I had a blend node right here. And I guess we can get that area masked by, I guess it's already masked, isn't it? Is it? So that represents that whole area. This reference this whole area, so I need to do a blend. And then subtract. That RGB. This will control this for it to be a little bit of a different color, maybe a dark gray. Actually, no, that's not doing this right. I wonder why. Ah, so I'm doing max light in here. So, I guess I'll do another height blend in order to get the exact mask on it. That way, if we want to adjust the parameters, we'll automatically also adjust the mass to whatever it needs to be once again. So what do I have the opacity as 0.23? So if I put this, oh, uh, yeah, 0.23. Do point two seven, I guess. It's gonna behave like that. I'm getting some other weird generation on it. All right, and max the contrast on it, and then use this as the mass. Hold on, shift left click. Hey, that's almost what I want. Last thing I need to do is subtract this from it. And that is not right. That's a little bit better. I might want to blur that a little bit too. I think that has all the colors I want on this now. If I'm gonna make this darker, I'll be adding some color to the tarp in a second. Um, let's go ahead and get the generator set up. And also we'll go ahead and get the metallic mask ready. I'm going to move all this over a bunch. And grab solid 
color. And then I want solid white on two areas. All right, let's be the mask of that. So I want this part to be metal. So this. And I know it's really, really shiny right now. It's like a very reflective mirror. And then I'm going to also want I guess it's blend here. Actually, I probably don't even need these, do I? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. Um, let's use the metal edge generator. Onto here. Except I want this metal edge to only affect in the center. On those parts. So let's add a blend here. And we will use just the this one to subtract. All right, there we go. Let's see, oh, whoops, I actually hit the mic there. Hopefully that wasn't too loud. Um, the AO is probably killing all this out. the grunge amount some and increase the wear level. I want to try out the sharper curvature. Yes, I like that. It's actually getting the center. I should do both. Let's grab this and this and then max lighten them. Now it's capturing that crack down there I want. Okay, that should be making it that color. It should also be making it less rough. I want this generator to be affecting the center at all. Actually, no, I do. Let me mess with that more. Um, need to add a blend here. this blend right here and this will be using this mask or this one to make it look like it's more chipped away Uh, 
yes, I've been using Substance Alchemist for quite a while. I've been in the, the closed beta for like, I don't remember how long ago I started, maybe like nine months ago. And I do like Substance Alchemist because it's pretty quick to use. The one thing to note about it is that Substance Alchemist is basically comprised of like core substances that are known as kind of in a layer style. So it has like the B2M node in it and so forth. Think of it like substance designer, but for layers. So it's much more intuitive and easy to use. So if you don't have, like I think if you have like a smaller production team and don't have someone to be like a full time texture artist and need materials relatively quickly, then I'd recommend using that. This substance design can take quite a long time to learn. And so Alchemist is not necessarily as strong as Substance Designer because all, all the nodes, all the layers inside Alchemist are inside here too, except for like the scattering and so forth. But those are just substance scraps they would build in Substance Designer and then put those into Alchemist. So you can also build your own Alchemist filters inside Substance Designer and export them. So it's definitely up the personal preference of what you want to use and how much time you have. If you don't have enough time to learn all of Substance Designer and have a very small production team, then I think using Alchemist would be a better option. Especially if you're like three people making an indie game. I believe though they are adding some more actual unique tools. So for the past like eight months or so, Alchemist hasn't had really anything unique layer wise. It's just had core substance designer nodes in it basically. But now they've showed their tiling tool and their delighting tool. And that's what I'm interested in. stuff around a little bit. I want to start playing with the roughness some more. So let's go to here and let's start adding in the core roughness for those components. Plug this into here, so this will be the roughness for that. And then this will be the roughness for the main part. And then lastly, we will have the roughness for um, the tarp. Which is not that part. A long time ago, I speculated there's going to be a lot of artificial intelligence tools, but I think the um, it does use that when doing the color palette thing. But I, I'm more interested in artificial intelligence that can like fully tile a material for you, which I have used a tool like that before, and it's amazing. That's the kind of artificial intelligence I want. So they added artificial intelligence tools for doing automatic seam removal and things like that. I would very much be interested in that. So I've used a tool called Auto Matrix, which has artificial intelligence seam removal, and it's really freaking good. But they don't really sell their program to freelance artists, so you can't really get access to it, sadly. It'd be nice if you could, but oh well. Another 
basic clouds for that. I'll be adding in some more details onto that too. So I'm gonna take the original metal edge layer before masking and add that on. Let's do add point one. something like that. And okay. I need to start messing a lot more with the roughness on that. Yes, this is the cool people texture stream. Minus the cool people part. Unless my cat comes in the meow more. I'm pretty sure she's hiding. Hmm. Not sure what I want to do for that. So let's go ahead and do a much finer clouds one and I'm going to add a grunge on top of this too. And just gonna real quick, let me go grab my water. So I'm dying of thirst. hydrated now. It's a little bit better. Let's see what's going on. Let's add and increase the overlay on this a little bit. I want to add an overall kind of grime and grunge layer to this too, like on top of everything. Which I may do just a different version of this, but perhaps inverted. Let's try that. Let's take this and increase the wear level a lot. Take the contrast down a lot. And then I'll probably blur it. So let's blur, it's on the point two. It's not point two. Is it not 
point two. Do as I command. There we go. And let's add kind of an overall kind of dirt and grime layer to this. That is not what I want. Let's invert this. darker then bring the opacity just down really low all right I'm happy with that for now I want to also to affect the overall roughness of everything it's kind of like a dust layer a bit Asking these things or framing these so I don't get too lost in this spaghetti mess. So let's frame that. So for this here, I want to add some more normal detail. So I'm going to take the normal map down here to get these more separated out and organized. So that's the metallic and that's the roughness right there. And I'm just going to move all the base color info way up here. and see what in the world I'm doing. I usually like keeping my outputs relatively close together though at the very end. Right, so I'm going to go to the patterns and I know there's one I like. There's a specific one I'm looking for. I think it's mesh too is what I want. Let's increase the tongueness a lot. Make just think super fine. Add a normal node. Have it much more subtle. And then do a normal combine or a normal blend. Normal combine, normal blend. Is this the one that has a mask? Yes, this has a mask. So I will use this mask for the kind of plastic tarp area. So this is kind of like a synthetic woven plasticky material. And then that will do that. And that is not what I want at all. color here. 
I think there's a better way to be doing this. Probably. Let's do high quality. Yes, I see. Almost no difference. I don't know what that's actually doing anything. Neat. I think they want this a little bit finer. Yes, I like that. All right. I would like to add nuts and bolts in here. I know I need to add some more grunginess to it. I'm probably going to use a generic grunge map for it. mess the color of the tarping. That's not it. Is this it? What are you? What are you? I guess this is what color it's using. Yes, it is. Is neat. I don't know, I'm kind of digging the red on this. I think I'm doing like a sci fi orange color. A uh, bright red could be inside of like a ship corridor with red and white. Or red and dark gray. I'll probably add some other color differences on the inside to here in a moment. Yeah, the weave pattern is basically overlaying directly on top of it and not warping to the direction of it. I do think it has some influence to it, but the warping should go around it. So what I've actually done previously to get things like super accurate on these is on the actual high poly mesh of this, I'll put an entire material on that back in Marm as a tool bag and add in all the details on it and then I would, when you bake it that way, you get lit it with literally the um, fiber sideways and so forth, and it all just looks really nice. So I might go back through and warp it soon, to see if I can't get the fall around the edge of it a bit better. But I'm not all too concerned with that yet. But the perfectionist in me definitely does want to. I just want to make sure I finish this whole material on this one stream to kind of get the full stream up of the YouTube. So Substance Designer inside the games will actually not decrease the file size of it. So the actual Substance Archive file, um, so the actual Substance Archive file that generates the texture is just code, so it's very small. But even if you use a substance inside a game, it still procedurally generates bitmaps, which it then has to save. So it would still end up being the, the same file size. Though the actual, you can have it generate on launch. So you could make the download a lot smaller, I guess you, yeah, so I guess it could make the downloads a lot smaller, couldn't it? Because it could download it and then generate on either level start or load up. But I don't know what kind of load time impact that has on levels and so forth. Plus I've also never liked using the Substance plugin inside Unreal Engine or Unity. It's always been kind of weird to me. Though it definitely would make the download size a lot smaller if they chose to have Substance generate all the textures on load. I just don't know if people would ever do that, or developers would. I feel like a 
probably run into quite a few issues trying to do using just the substance plugged in inside. So I've known that's been a big pain for me in the past to try to do it, and I just have not enjoyed it. Yeah, I used to, I had some materials that had like words on the actual simulation. So I put that onside the UV of the simulated fabric too to make the words warp around it. I like how that will look right. I was adding grunge, getting distracted. So let me go and label all this to make sure I know what in the world I'm doing. This is the base, right? Yes. So let's call it that. map. Probably nothing too crazy. I would go into a lot more detail in all these. Is that relatively soonish in about two hours it'll be dinner time. So I gotta be quick. See how this looks for adding kind of dust and scratches. on it. And then add something very subtle. Probably a dark grayish brown. And I'll change the opacity quite a bit. So I'm going to add a tile patch grayscale. And ooh, what in the world is it doing? Oh, right, it's being clipped. I don't want that there. I want that here. So tile patch grayscale. roughness. post I'll probably be cleaning all this up and then adding in parameters and so forth. Mainly just making sure I have everything labeled and organized. Before I do that though, I do want to add a few smaller details to this section here, which I think will bring it out a little bit more. And then I want to do a little bit more on the tarping here for the cable covering, 
just to highlight parts of it better. And then I think it'll be about done maybe. I would like to go a bit further on this, adding in some seams on the inside. Actually, I think I know an easy way I can do that. So if I navigate back over, not this. So, whoops, I keep on hitting my mic with my arm. Let's see. Why don't I try, yeah, let's use this. Perfect. So let's increase the distance on this, only source, grayscale, and then add in another levels node. Wait, I don't need to do that. Wait, yes I do. Actually, no, I don't. I had a very big lunch. Hmm. Let's separate these out using a flood fill. Flood fill to random grayscale. dock that. I guess that can't be docked for whatever reason. Okay, so let's edge detect this. And then lastly, just need to bevel it. Neat. Let's add in this blend node here. And everything breaks. And everything doesn't break. And multiply and see where this is putting it. Should be directly in the center of all of this. And that's way too strong. And also going out way too far. I hope I can fix that. Let's decrease the edge roundness to 1.2. And also the smoothness of the beveling. And then I'm going to add in a blend out right here to do the cropping. to about where I want it. I 
Actually, yes, let's do point 0.1. And rather than this be multiplied, let's put it to subtract, which is again going to break it, but not if we invert it first. this closer to how I want it. Or maybe I can't. after the invert, I think. Yes. Actually, I should have a mask just for this section here. What am I doing? And, and then take this shape and multiply. Multiply. And that should be right on this. Yes, it is. This is what I should be using instead of doing all this nonsense. Ah, perfectly not what I wanted. Put that there. Get rid of that. There we go. Now that's a bit closer to how I want it. Not quite exactly how I want it though. I'm gonna want to add in some screws and bolts and make that tighter. So let's add in a curve node. subtraction. Actually no, it just needs to be normalized. Let's do that before the curve nose. I think it's why I'm not able to really do much with this. Is 
increase the bubbling a little bit more. And why is not really doing anything? Oh, that's because of the edge detection distance. That's the 1.4. I'm going to uh, control the majority of the profile using more. Actually, that's a lot better. That's more what I wanted to have the curve going like that. I have the majority of this item besides some screws and bolts here and there. So I think probably after I do that, I may be done with the streaming for this and it'll be about done, maybe. Let's create a shape. So, actually, yes, let's do a shape. And then a curvature. Nope. A curve, not a curvature. This is what I'm going to use for the bolt of the shape. Something like that. Let's make this sharp. Um, Live stream stylized materials for Seth and Siren. I just have one second. On which YouTube channel is this? On the Game Textures YouTube channel? I don't remember ever streaming stylized stuff. At least I'm pretty sure the only streaming I've ever done is for like in the past two weeks now for Game Textures. So I haven't done anything stylized. There was the previous stream I did, I was doodling with like text node and whatnot and substance sign making patterns. And that was taken down because I thought that if I played like well-known music, it would just be demonetized, which we weren't gonna be monetizing the video anywhere, putting ads on, so we didn't care. But I didn't think the video would get taken down. So our first stream got taken down because I decided to play Beach Boys. Um, yeah, I don't know about the stylized texture ones. That might have been an older one, but it's not, wasn't up on the past two weeks then. I don't think I was here for that. So how do I want to place these? So let's take this set to absolute, no tiling. Let's add a blend here. And my computer is doing something. I wonder what. Probably nothing good. Um, yep, 
Yeah, hope the music I have playing now is like a no copyright music collection now, so hopefully it won't get it. Like the music I have before is still playing really low just because when I'm live streaming I'm not gonna be talking all the time. So I thought maybe since it'd be super low I'd be talking and they may not care, but um, UK Records does care. No, please scale down. And let's mirror this. And actually, I don't want to do this. Can I flip this here somehow? Maybe. This is almost what I want. have a single shape that I can just subtract. Actually, I don't think that's what I want either, is it? Hmm. I, I did have this where I want it. I'm trying to think really hard. But I'm failing at thinking. Let's just this and invert it. And then multiply this on top. Because my brain is not working right now. Maybe I did have that relative close high one of it. A little bit softer there on the edges. Okay. Let's put it to subtract. Subtract five point one. Let's move this to where we want it. it like right here. So let's put this and offset of zero and see where it's putting it. And not where I want it. Let's do an offset of five. Well, that's because I have this dynamically scaled. Um, step back to zero and use a separate transform you now to get this one in the place. And I'll figure out what the tiling I need to do for it is. So where is that about? This so it's not so sharp. There we go. I think that's how I want it. 
Let's actually do all the movement on that node there. So let's put this back to zero. And change the scale down just a little bit more. And I'm going to real quick unplug it so it will just generate faster. And save before I crash. Um, right, double click this. Now let's use this to decide where it all goes. So this one will go right here. And actually I can mirror this, perfect. I can do a full mirror here. Mirror corner, top left. Exactly how I want that. And then I can just add in one more transform 2D node here to add in some more. something like that and then lastly I am going to grab a tile sampler actually no I don't need a tile sampler I'll take this but make it a lot bigger and then take the transform on this and tile it a few times for this one, I want this tile vertically. So vertical tiling, like that. And then I can adjust the scale over here. I'll move this to where it needs to be. Let's just mirror left and right. Perfect. Blend. Add. And then move this over. To right about there. And then we just need to scale it down. Actually, I'm going to divide it once more. Of course, it's going to do that. And that means I need to scale this back up. And slide it over just a little bit. And I think that'll be good. I'll plug it back in and see what it does. Okay, let's plug this in and see how it looks. Okay, that's a little bit better detail-wise, I think. There is some other stuff I want to do on here and probably a little bit more generation-wise on here. I think I'd like the wear to be a little bit stronger. Um, and actually, I could make these metal too. And actually, I can do that easily. And change their color. a little bit too high to capture that. Okay. So let's add this to the metalness. And 
plug that in and hit add. Probably want to blur that just a tad and also change the color. And I think I want this to be the same color as that metal. That's a little bit better. So I think this is, I do want to change this center a bit up quite a bit. I was thinking of doing more of a, um, sort of a cross hat shape, kind of like the, the triangle is going left and right like this. I feel might look more appropriate. I also probably want to change the color up some too. Maybe try a brighter red. Um, I can actually see what color this is doing. No, don't do that. I do like the contrast of the red and the white on this. Maybe add some streaking down it too. Uh, yes, Marvelous Designer was used for this. Here is the Marvelous Designer scene. We're gonna be uploading this full stream onto the Game Textures channel. And mine should actually stay up this time. I had modeled out some basic tubing inside Blender, put this in the Marvelous and simulate this, and then baked it out using Marmoset Toolbag. And then just imported that one height map into Substance Designer. And that's kind of how I got this cable. Which I've done this pattern several times. I actually like the, I feel like I probably should have done something different this time. So I've done a similar material like this before. And basically the same cable pattern. Um, yeah. So I think that just about wraps it up. I'm probably going to end the stream now. There's maybe a little bit more I'm going to be doing on this. I'm probably going to be adding some more dirt and grime controls onto here. Um, but overall, I like how this looks. I think this will look cool in kind of a sci fi corridor. And it kind of already works as a trim sheet, too. So we're masking out these single components and doing something. I may want to change this up too. So I've done this pattern before. I don't like kind of doing the same thing more than once. Well, all right, let me check with Mike. I don't think there's anything else for us. Yeah, if this were to go in the library, there'd probably be some parts that I'd change up quite a bit. I think I'd change up the cabling design a lot and more of this, a whole lot more to be the more of the triangular pattern. Usually our streams are always gonna be a bit more of just doodling. And if it 
does turn into something that meets quality standards and it could go on, but I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. But yes, thank you everyone for tuning in. And this Friday, Matt Dirks will be streaming, most likely doing Substance Designer du Dueling 2, I'm pretty sure. He does like all the substances for game textures. He's made a lot of substances, several thousand. Bye-bye, thanks for checking in.